Hello friend, today I'm gonna to share why you should not buy an air fryer and what you should buy instead. And I am going to share the best map app. Let's get to it. I'm gonna be talking about a kitchen gadget and this is an air fryer. So an air fryer is essentially an amped up countertop convection oven. It doesn't actually fry your food. Now this gadget has surged in popularity in the last few years, nearly 40% of US homes have had one as of July 2020, and that's probably gone up even more with the pandemic and people cooking at home, home more often. And even though they were popular and in theory healthier for you, I resisted one for a long time. Now that's because of they were kind of one use or unitaskers as um, you talked about in an Alton Brown video in episode 159. And um, so I wasn't super thrilled to get it, but Let's talk about what it is. So forced convection heats the surface of food almost twice as quickly as natural convection heating that happens in an oven. The air fryer setting moves the air more efficiently throughout the oven and the heat, it heats it faster than usual from all sides. So, and because the, they're usually compact in size too, they heat up faster, they preheat faster, and they have more energy within them. So that's why these are so good. And that's probably why people started to call them air frying because it does surround the food and cook it from all sides. Kind of like when you dip something in hot oil and that oil cooks everything from um, all sides as well. But it's, so it's a similar process, but a different medium. Um, now why I changed my mind is because um, I didn't get an actual air fryer like you've probably seen a lot, but I got the Bravel Smart Oven Air Fryer Pro. So um, this thing is massive and I'm gonna try to put it on the desk now. Um, this thing is gigantic. So it is a gigantic uh, countertop oven, but it does like 13 different things. So it has 13 smart cooking functions. Toast, bagel, broil, bake, roast, warm, pizza proof, air fry, reheat, cookies, slow cook, and dehydrate. So it's not a one use, it's everything, but it also does air frying super, super well. Definitely check out an air fryer. <laughs> Yeah, this thing is massive. You know what, I had only seen- It can seen... cook a 14 pound turkey in this bad boy. Oh yeah. Like it is sure. serious. Uh, no nine pieces kidding. of toast, um, like a four quart, five quart Dutch oven, nine by 13 pans. So I did, I want, you know, the other kind are like these little compartments and it does one thing. It only air fries, yeah. which is, they're really cool, but I wanted something that if I'm gonna get one, I'm gonna spend more money, it's definitely more expensive but it can do so much more. Totally, so, And totally. I love it, I use this now, I don't use my oven anymore. I use oh, this nice. even when I bake, when I roast, when I broil, all of that, I do it in here because it Which heats up faster, it cooks faster, it uses less energy. Mm. It's just this on my counter, like it's just, yeah, so much better in every way. I so I was like, oh yeah. That's Once I great. finally got it, and I wanted this certain one. It wasn't um, being made for a while. Gosh, it's so massive. And then it's funny, Chef Steps for a cool mm -hmm. sheet came out with actually a new one. So that's why they were they kind of stopped uh, production of this one for a while. So Chef Steps I talked about in episode eleven. Mm -hmm. They have this jewel version of an air fryer, this exact oven, uh -huh. but it connects to your smartphone um, and, and it gives you updates and you oh, can wow. use Alexa or Siri or whatever to cook and it tells mm. you the exact temperature and you can like multiple, uh, do like, oh, maybe air fry it first and then broil at the end or bake and it does all these amazing things. Of course, it's even $150 more than the one I got and this one's expensive, but yeah, yeah. it's very cool. I like to get things, one, get it perfect, get the one I want and I'll never have to buy anything again. Yeah. I had only seen the type that are more vertical. Yeah, they're like the usual ones, yeah, are kind of vertical and they just have that little drawer that they come out, you know, that kind of comes out of them, usually a lot of them. And yeah, that's really, like I said, it's really good for certain things, but you can't do toast and bagels and pizza. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got a pizza oven. You can throw a nine inch pizza in there, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what the, um, the uh, air fryer tray looks like. So that's how that air gets oh, from all right. sides. Yep. Um, so that's how that air flows and really mm -hmm. kind of air fries everything. So it's super, super cool. And it's got a cooling rack. It's got, you know, instructions that I've never read. <laughs> um, a cooling rack, regular baking ovens, roasting pans, all kinds of crap. All right. So um, cool. Hey, fun fact, yes. a little science here. Yeah. Um, so molecules just in air, they're traveling at about 500 meters per second. 
Whoa. at normal temperatures. So yeah. imagine how fast when you heat it up, they're moving faster. Yeah. So those are probably moving at like 800 meters per second, bombarding the food and like yeah. making their way in. Yeah. And that's why it gives it that crispy yeah. texture on the outside, but still nice and juicy on the inside that's great. and delicious. Yeah. I've just been floored with it. So cool. even, and I even cooked toast this morning just because it was so easy because you could. and it took five minutes and yeah. yeah, it was just like good. Yeah, exactly. Nice. So it's really, really neat. All uh, right. Well, and thank yeah, you. I wasn't going to get one. I was like, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I can't get one more thing. And then now I love it. It's just like an instant pot. When I finally got it, oh, I was right. like, all right, it is pretty dang cool. Well, I, so I still have not gotten an instant pot, <laughs> pot and I'm not going to get one of those in the near future, but who knows? Maybe yeah. in the future. I tell you, if you're even like in a dorm or something, you could get away oh, with just one of yeah. these in an instant pot and you mm -hmm. can make serious gourmet meals, like mm. just like eat better than any of your classmates for sure. Yeah. Or and any not have apartment. a microwave. Yeah. Don't worry about a microwave. Yeah. Cause this reheats way better. Um, and it is, you know, the healthier part is debatable, I think, but certainly like deep frying stuff where oil soaks in, it is, you use some oil, you use some kind of fat mm -hmm. to transfer that heat, but not as much mm -hmm. for sure. And I'm not going to deep fry fry fries in this or it's worth it right there. Oh. Just getting fries that are still crispy nice. or uh, air fried Brussels sprouts. Oh. Or like the ones that you get at Taproot here yeah. in town. Oh my God. So good. Awesome. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I learned so much about air fryer yeah. that I didn't know. So cool. I am talking about a web-based app and this is called the true size and it has to do with our world and about maps and about our perceptions. All right, so our world is a sphere and it really translates awkwardly when we're trying to make it into a two-dimensional flat piece of paper. So imagine you take an orange, you cut the orange in half and you squeeze the juice out of it and you have this half orange. And then if you wanted to make that flat, you squish it down and what does it do? It like breaks apart, okay? And that's essentially what we're trying to do. And so this term projection is used to morph any kind of globe into two dimensions. And the most popular of these that is used with the globe, with the map of our earth, is the Mercator projection. Now, this was first introduced in 1569 by a Flemish cartographer. And it is still used today. So every map projection, whether it's that one or a different one, it introduces distortion. And each one of these different types of projections has their own set of problems. But one of the most common criticisms of the Mercator map is that it exaggerates the size of the countries that are close to the poles. So that includes the United States is fairly close, and of course Canada, Russia, Europe, North, especially the Northern European countries, so those get look really large while it downplays the size of those that are near the equator. So Central America, India, the whole African continent, etc. Those look, comparatively speaking, tiny. So on the Mercator projection, Greenland, it appears to be roughly the same size as Africa. But in reality, Africa is about 15 times larger than Greenland. So here's where the app comes in. The true size was created. It was actually inspired. The creators saw an episode of the West Wing. I haven't seen the episode, so I don't know why. But also there's an infographic by Kai Krause that's entitled The True Size of Africa. And so what they have done with this app is that you can grab a country and then you extract it out and then you can lay it on top of another country. It is so fascinating to use. And it's extremely easy. I highly recommend you go to this web-based app, The True Size. Oh, this is so cool. So I have heard about how those maps are distorted mm -hmm. and, and yeah, how big Africa, essentially they always compare it to Africa because yeah. it is so massive yeah. and it, it looks big on a globe, but not as big as it is, yes. especially compared to, like you said, all these other continents and countries and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, and it doesn't really surprise me that, of course, the United States, not only is it always centered in anything yes, that right. is from the U.S., which yeah. is also just kind of silly, uh, but also bigger. Yeah, of yeah. course. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, this map makes us look larger. Yeah. Okay. It's like, um, yeah, yeah, making up for something or I don't know what. It is, yeah. Where the joke is there, but yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I love this. I love that you can actually very quickly 
and then kind of set it right. And yep. then, yeah, it's it's hard because we are so used to what globes look like and we think that's what it looks like. So when you say, you know, this is what it mm-hmm. actually the size is, it's like that can't be right. Yeah. Like it seems so weird. I know. Um, but it and is it's, cool. And it's really <laughs> fun. Like I took... Alaska, so Alaska is another thing. Like, it just looks huge. Now, yeah. Alaska is big, yes, but it makes it even bigger. So I took Alaska and I moved it around and I took India and moved it around. It's just, it's really, really uh, yeah. fun. That would be really fun. Yeah, absolutely. And cool to like show your kids, if mm-hmm. you have kids. Oh, or, for sure. Um, you know, a school, if you're a teacher, all those things. Oh, really, yeah. Really cool applications yep. for this. And that was part of their goal. They want teachers to use it more. Oh, cool. So, and ideally you have a globe. Like a globe, then you can really see in three dimensions. Yes. But you can't carry around a globe with you. Right. And all of that. So this is just a wonderful resource. Yeah, and kids might not have a globe at home, but yeah. they have their smartphone or whatever, yeah. so they can use that. Super cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. You're welcome. And if you want to learn about that or the air fryer and everything else on our show, you can go to our show notes on our website at 10bestest.com slash air fry. That's 10bestest.com slash air fry, all lowercase, all one word. Thank you for joining us, friend. I'm Brian Hart. I'm Karen McFarlane Holman. Let us know in the comments. Do you own an air fryer yet? And let us know. Do you know how small Greenland actually is? If you're enjoying the show, give us a like and share it with a friend. Stay tuned for another great show. And don't forget to stay curious.